Fortunately, modern people know quite little about the consequences of nuclear explosions, and our main study subjects are the tragedies that happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. Back then, two powerful bombs claimed more than 200,000 lives, and these are only the people who died in the first six months after the disasters. But can the knowledge humanity's acquired over recent years help residents of big cities avoid such repercussions? Let's take New York, one of the biggest and fast-growing places on Earth, as an example and find out what will be left of a human after a nuclear explosion, what buildings may become a threat to the civilian population, and whether the most progressive cities like New York can resist nuclear attacks. This video has been made for educational purposes only. For starters, we need to figure out if a bomb blast with a force equal to 15 tons of TNT, and that's precisely how much of it was hidden in Little Boy, the nuke dropped on Hiroshima, will be just as devastating for New York. To do this, we should reconstruct the events. On August 6th, several warplanes took to the sky above the peaceful Japanese town. I should note, however, that apart from Colonel Paul Tibbetts, the crew had no idea what kind of bomb they were carrying. At 8.14 a.m. local time, there was a loud explosion over Hiroshima. In the first nanosecond, a ball of fire occurred at ground zero and grew to 100 feet in diameter. Its temperature reached 300,000 degrees Celsius. Heated air above the ground started to glow. The aircraft crew that hastily left the area later recalled that everything around them sparked with blue and that they had a strange metallic taste in their mouths. 80,000 people died instantly. They were literally wiped off the face of the planet. But I'll come back to that a bit later. So if a bomb of this sort strikes, for example, modern-day New York, will the repercussions be just as terrifying? Unfortunately, most likely, they'll be even worse. Since Japan is an island state, which means that the blast wave couldn't spread farther across the mainland. What's more, frequent earthquakes made adjustments to Japanese lives which actually helped them. Many buildings in Hiroshima were made of rice paper and light materials, so people were not buried alive under heavy concrete slabs. Meanwhile, the architectural wonders of New York may play a nasty trick on it. So what will happen to New York buildings if somebody suddenly drops an atomic bomb on them? If a bomb with the explosive force of 15 kilotons of TNT hits Times Square, within the first nanoseconds it'll produce a massive ball of fire, and its temperature will be several hundred times greater than that of the sun. The flash of light will blind everyone within 20 kilometers right up to Queens and the village of Newark. It'll take just four seconds after the explosion to turn Rockefeller Center into a horrible mess of concrete, steel, and poor victims that chose the worst possible time to go out. Famous New York skyscrapers alone will become a separate deadly weapon. The blast wave will burst all the glass surfaces into millions of shards. They'll move at a tremendous speed, keep crumbling, and dig into everything they meet on the way. The shockwave will cover a territory of almost 70 square kilometers. It'll break windows in all buildings up to the American Museum of Natural History, and it won't avoid the Statue of Liberty in the process. The chances to survive will be substantially lower given the breakdown of mobile phones and computers, and electromagnetic pulse triggered by the nuclear explosion will simply disable all gadgets. But this damage will be the least of it. The worst impact will be caused by one thing we can't even see – radiation. But how exactly is it going to affect people? The tragedy of Hiroshima has shown humankind one of the most frightful phenomena of modern times – nuclear shadows. These living monuments are the only remains of the people who happen to be near the center of the blast. In the first seconds after a bomb detonates, 
The amount of released energy is so huge that it needs only an instant to vaporize a human body and leave no more than a residue permanently scorched into the asphalt or concrete. Silhouettes like this can still be found on the streets of Hiroshima, and even such a death isn't the most agonizing, as a person disappears faster than they can feel any pain. The scariest fate awaits those who will be from 3 to 6 kilometers away from ground zero. That's because the greatest danger of a nuclear weapon isn't devastating destruction, but radiation sickness that strikes every living creature around. Within one hour after the detonation, the radioactive plume will blanket a territory of 50 square kilometers. People will be urged to leave the area within 75 kilometers from the center of the explosion for several years. If an atomic bomb suddenly goes off above central New York, 250,000 people will die immediately. But around 300,000 more will suffer from radiation sickness in the next few months. But let's not forget that the tragedy of Hiroshima happened almost 80 years ago. So maybe now people possess knowledge that can help reduce the impact of a nuclear explosion. The American Interagency Modeling and Atmospheric Assessment Center develops plans of salvation for various emergencies, including a nuclear attack. If a disaster happens, the organization will promptly start tracking the radioactive plume and send all their forecasts to federal authorities. Then these data will be used to initiate the emergency evacuation. In many big cities, especially those situated in seismic zones, there are pre-designed evacuation plans and underground fallout and bomb shelters. Although out of 18,000 bunkers once built in New York, more than half of them currently function as bars and restaurants. So these places will be kind of useless. Sadly enough, after the bomb explodes, most citizens won't be able to protect themselves anyhow. You'll have to be really lucky to survive close to ground zero. For instance, Eizo Nomura was just several meters away from the place where the bomb hit and the tragedy of Hiroshima began. He stayed alive because he decided to go down to the basement to grab some important documents. It seems that over the last decades, many countries have succeeded in creating this new era weapon but not ways to escape it. This is perplexing, as simple logic suggests that if you can shoot, then you might as well be shot. I've used New York City as an example to show you what can happen to a modern city if an atomic bomb with a force of 15 tons of TNT is deployed over it. But arsenals of some large countries include nuclear rockets whose explosive force equals 300 kilotons of TNT, and that's 20 times more powerful than Little Boy dropped on Hiroshima. I hope we never have to learn what happens after this kind of explosion.